Good morning. I see a lot of green out there. Happy St. Patrick's Day. <clears throat> welcome on the fifth Sunday of Lent. A warm welcome to our parishioners and everyone visiting us this weekend. Our parish depends on and thanks you for your continued financial support in order to meet the many spiritual and material needs of our parishioners and of our local community. You may place your offerings in the collection boxes in the baptistry. Next Sunday, Palm Sunday, the 11 and 2 p.m. Masses will begin in the Piazza for the Blessing of Palm Branches and the procession into church. On Easter Sunday, there will be a shuttle parking for the 8.30 and 11 a.m. Masses at Clara Bird Elementary School, located on Ironbound Road near Harris Teeter. Multiple shuttle buses will be running, getting everyone back and forth quickly. Join us this Friday at 6 p.m for our last Lenten Supper, hosted by our Knights of Columbus. Stations of the Cross will follow at 7 p.m. The presider at this Mass is our pastor, Father Eric Ayers, assisted by Deacon Jim Finley. Please stand and greet those around you. Join in singing number 645, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy, number 645. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. 
I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <clears throat> pray by your help we beseech you Lord our God may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which out of love for the world your son handed himself over to death through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever amen A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All, from the greatest to the least, shall know me, says the Lord. For I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Please. 
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also my servant will be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. 
I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and honor to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we're heading into the home stretch of Lent. I hope this has been a faithful time for you all and that you are all anxiously awaiting Easter. Preparing for Easter is, of course, the purpose of Lent, but this can be a challenging time. It's difficult to maintain even fairly simple disciplines when they are not habits, especially when the rest of the world really doesn't understand what we're doing and is much more interested in self-indulgence than penance. The two weeks remaining can feel like a long time. I know it doesn't look like it now, but I used to do a lot of endurance athletic events, right? Triathlons and marathons. Believe it or not, I know, it seems funny, but uh, when you reach the 25 mile mark in a marathon, there's usually very well-meaning uh, spectators that are genuinely trying to encourage you by saying things like, you're almost there, only a mile to go, right? And you're like, Ugh. Because when you're actually running the marathon, right, you, you understand that the finish line is really 1.2 miles away. And at that point in the race, 1.2 miles seems like a very long way to go. But there are also those other spectators that really do understand what you're going through, right? People that have been there. Their shouts of encouragement are things like, all right, time to dig deep, right? Or finish strong. They realize you're tired, weak, and hurting. But their comments have a higher purpose than to make you feel better. They want you to finish the race well. The church has that same purpose. The first reading she gives us today from Jeremiah is a beautiful vision of God's ultimate plan for us. All our sins forgiven and intimate communion with God and everyone else, right? It's gonna be awesome. That's critical to keep in the forefront of our minds because the other readings provide the sobering truth that we're going to experience suffering on the journey. But we don't need to be afraid because Jesus goes first. And we also learn some very interesting information about him. Now remember the, the understanding of God that the Jewish people had in first century Palestine is the same that we have today, right? That God is one, perfect, immortal, and unchanging, right? The second reading from the letter to the Hebrews describes Jesus in a way that seems contradictory to that, right? We hear that he is in the flesh, that he offered prayer, that he learned obedience through suffering, and there was apparently some process by which he was made perfect. So, 
The church had to spend several hundred years clearly defining and defending the paradox of Jesus being fully God and fully man, right? They had to address heresies, right? The heresy of docetism taught that Jesus was not fully human. The heresy of Arianism taught that Jesus was not fully God. Now, the Nicene Creed that we say most Sundays addressed both of these, but Arianism in particular, right? We hear and we say that Jesus is God from God, light from light, true God from true God, right? It's the paradox. So once you accept the paradox that Jesus is fully God and fully man, you can understand that like all of us, Jesus' humanity developed, right? He grew and he learned like the rest of us. On one hand, this is very comforting because it means that Jesus really does understand us, right? He understands everything that we've gone through. On the other hand, it gives us a real head scratcher of a question, right? That is, when in his humanity, did Jesus develop the understanding of his divinity? That one will really bake your noodle, right? When you spend some time on that one, right? So the 20th century theologian Hans Urs, Urs von Balthasar, that's a fun name to say, was one of the people that delved into this topic, right? He wasn't really afraid of baking his noodle that much. So, And he proposed an idea that I find compelling and that I think fits in well with today's readings. Von Balthasar believed that Jesus' mission is the key to understanding him, right? It is how we should understand him and how he would have understood himself. His divinity would have had absolute knowledge of his mission. His humanity would have had knowledge that he had a mission. And as his humanity developed, the faith that he would come to fully understand that mission. His entire identity, therefore, was associated with the purpose of fulfilling that mission. So while he may not know all the details when he was younger, right, he could still discern and reject what was not in line with the purpose of that mission mission. So the gospel reading today takes place after Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Right? We'll read that next week. With the people laying palm branches at his feet and shouting Hosanna right, in his glory. Uh, people from all over the world are gathered there and they want to see Jesus. Right? They've, they've heard of him from all over the world. And then Jesus explains that his glory will be accomplished through his death. That had to have been disturbing to those hearing it. And Jesus says that he is troubled, which is perfectly understandable, right? But he says that was the purpose for which he came, his mission, his identity. I believe much of the anxiety that is so prevalent in our society today can be attributed to a lack of sense of purpose. Ideas like atheism and consumerism and a bunch of other isms and ideologies, right? They, they either outright deny or they intentionally ignore the fact that God created us all out of love with a purpose. The Catechism of the Catholic Church gives us a very simple definition of this purpose. Paragraph 1721 states, God put us in the world to know, to love, and to serve him, and so to come to paradise. It's our purpose. When we identify ourselves by our political leanings, right, our career, or our sexual preferences, we sell ourselves short. Our identity is far greater. The one 
perfect, immortal, and unchanging God created each one of us out of love. We have infinite value and dignity. By our baptism, we become adopted sons and daughters of God, heirs to the kingdom with our brother, Jesus. Our identity, our purpose, and our mission is his, bringing about that kingdom here on earth. Jesus himself says, whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also my servant will be. And where is he? He's on the cross. By his suffering and dying, he redeemed us all. Now, we don't have to be crucified, but when we do suffer, as members of the mystical body of Christ, we can unite our suffering with his, and his suffering invests ours with redemptive value. During Lent, we imitate Jesus by denying ourselves and helping others. The purpose is not just to experience suffering, right? We'll get plenty of that in life without intentionally adding any, or to lose weight, or to merely give us an excuse for overindulgence at Easter. The purpose is our conversion to conform ourselves to our Lord Jesus Christ and glorify him by accepting the salvation he merited for us and spend all eternity with him to truly finish the race well. Let us now stand together and profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. <clears throat> again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, <coughs> and life everlasting. We are God's people, made in his image and likeness. Let us show forth God's love and care by praying for all who are in need. For Pope Francis, on the 11th anniversary of his election to the papacy, may God sustain him in his ministry, inspire his teaching, and help him to lead the church to greater faith and love. Be pleased to hear us. For the people of our twin parish, St. Joseph in Tamond, Haiti, and for all Haitians, may the dark night of gang violence and threatening demonstrations yield to a sunrise of calm and civility. Be pleased to hear us. For young men and women, may God give them the gift of understanding to discern their vocation 
and for the gift of courage to follow his call. Be pleased to hear us. Lord, be us For an end to abortion, may the example of St. Joseph inspire us to commit ourselves to the service and defense of all human life, especially where it is vulnerable or threatened. Be pleased to hear us. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. For our elect, who at the Easter Vigil will receive the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. May they experience Christ who calls them to life, unbinds them, and lets them go free. Be pleased to hear us. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. For the sick or injured, and those facing or recovering from surgery, May they find strength in their union with Jesus, who himself was made perfect through suffering. Be pleased to hear us. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. For the recently deceased, Father Russell, Russell Edward Smith, Molly Allspar, Sally Fraser, Anne McKenna, Thomas Dolan, Gary Meister, for all the dead, may they bear an abundant harvest with Christ in eternal life. Be pleased to hear us. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Give us the joy of your salvation, Lord. Sustain a willing spirit within us. Hear our humble prayer and lead us closer to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purified them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. <clears throat> Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered <clears throat> to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Bede and with all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence we rely, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Barry our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. <clears throat> Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, the whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass <coughs> and temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, <clears throat> but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Join in singing the communion antiphon found in the worship aid.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may be always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Next Sunday begins Holy Week. See the bulletin for times of the Easter Triduum liturgies. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire 
they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Join in singing number 885, Lift High the Cross, number 885. 